Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and in this video we are going to be making a mount for a large parabolic mirror like this one. A lot of people will buy these off of our website and ask what's the easiest way to put a mounting configuration on this so I don't have to lean it against a trash can or a wall. The easiest way in my opinion is actually the best way. In a previous video I showed you a very simple way to mount one of these using rare earth magnets. The link for that video is right there. I also showed you how to convert a direct TV dish into a parabolic cooker. The link for that video is here. Direct TV dishes, by the way, this will work for those. They come with their own mounting setup to mount on your roof, but they don't work really well. They're hard to turn, move around. It's kind of an awkward stand that they come with. It's made to be in one position on your roof. This video we're going to be using expandable foam spray and we are also going to be ripping a 2x4 and a half. So let's get started. For this step you are going to need a table saw and a 2x4. You're also going to need some safety protection. When I rip this you're going to see me change sides. A lot of woodworking guys don't like to do that. If you're doing this by yourself you can let the wood go and change sides. You just want to make sure that no one is that way so if the wood flies out no one gets hurt. I've ripped thousands of two by fours in half this way and I've never had one kick back. The secret to that is buying a very straight piece of wood. You can buy a straight piece of wood and it can actually start to pinch on you. Those don't really work that well but we're going to see if we can get it the first shot with this piece. By the way, you want to set your saw for a little bit less than one and three quarters. It varies depending on your saw blade. And if you did it correctly, you should have two pieces of wood that are split right down the middle. You can buy wood pre-cut like this. They're usually crooked. When you cut a two by four, it usually comes out nice and straight. Definitely make sure, if you're new to using table saws, don't put your hands inside the saw base area. Keep your hands away. I've seen professional woodworkers put their fingers a couple inches from the blade. If you have to do something there, use a push stick. Keep, keep your fingers away. It's definitely not worth the risk of uh, losing one of these. To do a hexagon, you have six sides to it. A circle is 360 degrees. So we need to make a 360 degree configuration using six different sides. So what you do is you divide 6 into 36 and you get 60. Now, that is not the correct number that you need to set your saw at because we're sharing two angles here. This is actually a square. A square is 45 and 45. Most people already know that. Those two together make up 90. So you have to figure you got 1, 2, 3, 4. That comes out to be 90. 4 times 90 is 360. And you've got two angles, so you have to divide it again. So we have to divide this again, and the answer for that is 30. If you're doing a octagon shape, you're going to need to go at 22.5. And if you want to do 10 all the way down, I'll show you how to do some really interesting cuts with triangles even in future videos. What you do is flip your wood and I'm lining it up right to the edge. General rule of thumb is to the diameter of your parabolic mirror and divide it by three. So you can go a little bit bigger, you can actually go right to the edge. Once you get your first cut, you take your wood, flip it, and turn it. If you are going bigger than this, you should put a stop over here. That I have the six pieces set up. I have six two inch wood screws. These are outdoor screws. You can use regular drywall screws, probably the ones with the coarse threads. The fine threads don't seem to pull as well. They can strip out. This is a 3 16 inch drill bit. You're going to want to drill a hole in the end of these. 
like this. And you wanna go in at a single, almost matching the angle that this is. So. Once you have that done, you're gonna take your wood glue. This is um, outdoor, this is good wood, high bond wood glue. You're gonna to wanna to put a little bit there. I'm using a water bottle with a hole in the top because I buy this stuff by the gallon. And you wanna join those together. Once you have them joined together, take your wood screw, put it in the hole. Squeeze this really tight. And drive it in. And those are nice and tight. They're not going anywhere. So you're gonna to wanna to do this six more times. You can do them in sets of two or just work in a circle. You want them to be nice and flat. We are using the factory depth on this. Number six should close it nicely, and it does. If you have one turned up really bad, if it starts to curve up, that means that your miter saw was not set straight up and down this way. So you wanna check that before you do it. This is up a little bit, but it's definitely workable. Um, if you do what I just did and use the side of the wood that you didn't drill a hole in, you wanna do all your uh, have them line up. You can go ahead and drill it now. So you've got your hole drilled. And you now have a perfect hexagon. If you want to see how to build a nice hexagon cage, um, the link for that video is here. It's basically the same principle, but it's much bigger than this. And it's pretty cool. It took me a couple hours to do. So we've got this done. Now what you want to do is measure the distance across. This measures out to be just short of 15 inches. So we are going to cut a piece of wood that is 14 and 3 quarters for this. So here's that piece of wood. It's just a simple chop cut, so I'm not going to go into showing you how to do that. You also want to measure the centers from the outer points. This is eight and a half. So you want to go on this particular one. I'm going to put a little dot at uh, four and a quarter here, four and a quarter here, and that's going to be your center for this. So this is going to be drilled into place like this. But before we do that, I'm going to be showing you in a future video how to make a mount specifically for this. It works very well. You can make your own tripod out of wood. It takes you just a few minutes to do. If you are going to be mounting your parabolic dish to a standard photography tripod, um, you can do that up to 25 inches. If you have a really good tripod, you can go 36 or the 46 inch mirrors. We're going to be putting a small quarter inch nut right there that's going to enable us to grab the male part of the tripod. So I went ahead and measured where the perfect center was on this. It was a little bit less, seven and a half inches. That is gonna go in there like this. I am using a 16th paddle bit for this. You can use a standard drill bit. The paddle bits work because they finish with a nice flat surface, so you don't have a hole. You don't wanna go too with this. This is gonna be experiencing a lot of stress. All of your mirrors gone there. So you wanna make the hole a little bit smaller than this, and you don't wanna go in beyond the depth of it and you want to be as centered as possible. And like this. Now it's a little bit smaller than the hole that we have. So we are going to have to hammer this into place. I'm going to actually rub a little bit of glue around the outside. You don't want to get it in where the threads are. So you want to be as tidy as possible with it. The glue alone is definitely not going to hold this. So. You can see that that's nice and flush right there. I did it the perfect depth. That's all you have to do. So that's in there pretty good. Now we need to figure out a way to lock this into place. 
you're going to want to get a flat washer with a quarter hole, preferably a little bit bigger. You want a big flat washer and you drill four holes in it. Now you want to clamp this down. You don't want to do this holding it because if this doesn't twist, it'll cut your finger pretty bad. So I just drilled four holes in it. This particular washer is has rubber backing on it. You don't have to do that. You want to use the thinnest piece of metal washer that you can find and you want to make sure that it covers this hole up. I'm going to be putting this one upside down like this and then we're going to just be taking regular wood screws and get into place. You want to make sure that your hole lines up perfectly. If you have to, um, actually grab this and bore this out a little bit bigger if the quarter inch is really tight. Test this on your tripod setting. Make sure that it fits your tripod. So I am using one and a quarter inch fine drywall screws for this. There's a reason why I'm using the fine ones. You want to mark your hole. Once you have it lined up, you want to mark your hole exactly where you want this to be. Use the screw, dig a little notch in there. And then what I usually do is take, you can pre-drill this by the way, but I found it easier to take the drywall screw, get it started just a little bit, and then drill, reverse it about halfway down. You don't want to go too far because then it's not going to grab. What this enables you to do is to drill in and on the edge here it'll prevent you from splitting wood. This kind of acts as a uh, very simple pre -drill. The nice thing about it, you don't get yourself a lot of uh, debris. Get your first one into place. So we've got one in place right there. If you cover the hole up just like I just covered the hole up there. <laughs> no, I didn't. Eh, close. I actually went too far. Test your other holes first because they may actually, like this one actually lines up better. Go straight across from it, get it started, and then push with a lot of weight. Do the reverse drill a little bit. We now have two into place. You usually only have to do the reverse drill technique if it's near the edge. So at these set, uh, pretty good positioning and the hole right down the middle. Good point now to go test this on your tripod. So this one's down nice and tight on the tripod. If you end up finding that the shaft inside of there is not long enough to lock down, you can actually take this and do what I did, trim this on a belt sander. You don't want to take them off too much because then there won't be anything to hold them in place. Once you have it in place and you know it's nice and centered, take a square like this and just put it to the side. Line it up so that way you know it's nice and square and centered. Get yourself a pre-drill. I have three inch outdoor wood screws. You can use And I'm not gluing this one because you can glue it. But if anything ever happens to this, you can just pull these screws out and you don't have to take the whole thing apart. I have my parabolic mirror. You're going to need a about a 10 pound weight. I'm using this aluminum ingot as my weight. You want to place your hexagon right where you think it needs to be. This particular dish, the center on this, is actually right at six inches. I know because I've done it before. So we're going to put all of them at six inches. And then once you have your center, here's where the fun begins. Before you place your weight on there, you want to just hold it with your hand in place. You want to take your expanding foam spray and run a bead around the outside. You don't want to get it up under this bar. You also don't want to get it deep in the corners because when it expands, it can actually put pressure on the dish. So with this stuff, Make sure that you use it within a month or two of buying it because it will actually dry up on you. When you buy it at the store, shake it. Make sure that it's fluid inside. And you just want to put a very fine bead because this stuff expands. You can put, put the bead right up under here. Try not to get it down where the dish and this bar separate from each other. You want it to be um, like that. And then once you have this, once you've got your outside, you want to take this and
just make, just fill it in. Make sure you don't go under the bar again, because it will expand outward. I actually went under it a little bit. You can go a little bit under it, you just don't want to put a big glob up under there. So once you have that filled in, you place your weight on the top, balance it nicely, and you let it do its thing. So when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. This is a 36 inch mirror that I did earlier. I use the same size actually. The foam should not extend up over this bar. If it does, take a carpet knife and or a box cutter, extend the blade long and cut it carefully so you don't cut yourself or cut into the mirror. In a future video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own DIY tripod like this one that's extremely sturdy. This can hold about 600 pounds. For the parabolic mirrors, you can use smaller ones. I'm also gonna be showing you what this stand's all about that we did for Nippon Television. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.